You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. This is episode 927. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. We do appreciate it, and we are genuinely appreciative of all the comments and reviews that you have left on iTunes, Stitcher, and other places where you can download podcasts. We're really excited for today. We're going to be hopefully helping someone out and also clarifying and updating again best applications to conduct mapping. Hey guys, this is David from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, just want to say thanks real quick for all the work you've done with the Drone U, all the amazing content you've created, all the video tutorials, amazingly helpful. Uh, the 107 tutorials were just great. I passed the 107 exam with 100. So, you know, thanks a lot for all those uh, training videos. My question is that I have a Phantom 4 Pro and I've begun exploring mapping with it. And one thing that I've noticed that I haven't heard anything about in any podcast list, I've missed it uh, being mentioned in one, is a 99 waypoint limit. It seems that the workaround for that is to create smaller emissions or increase your altitude, which can affect accuracy. But I was wondering how you guys have dealt with that and what your workaround is for that. Is there you know, one app that will work better than the other? Or another thing that I read is that DJI has that set up in the drone so that no more than 99 waypoints can be added. Anyways, any help with that? Any insights with that would be most appreciated. And um, thanks a lot and keep up the good work. Thank you, David. So interesting dilemma. We've not heard of that before, which is I'm surprised. It seems like that would be an issue that we would have heard of by now. So it seems maybe he's using an older drone or he's trying to fly through DJI Go and he's not using a mapping application. I'm not really sure. Any mapping should not be done probably through DJI Go. Uh, Ground Station Pro does have its own uh, mapping solutions, but it is not limited to 99 waypoints. Hmm. Um, Man, that's... I'm like, uh... (laughs) Because you've not experienced this. No, I experienced it like four years ago, but um, it's not an issue that's common. I mean, on the old BTU unit for the Phantom 2, that was a problem. It was a problem even for the Inspire 2 when it first came out with Ground Station Pro because they didn't want people using the Inspire series for mapping, but then they fixed that. I really think this is a factor of his choice of applications, but I don't know without being there, and I don't want to like roast the guy on the show without knowing information. And yeah, I well, there's roast no reason to do anyway. that, even if you knew, <laughs> didn't know exactly. Yeah. So I guess then the point is because he did ask, okay, so what apps? What are you doing for a, a workaround? And and so technically, it's not a workaround per se. It's just what apps are you using? I guess ultimately becomes the question. Yeah, that makes sense. it does ultimately become the question. And there are many applications uh, that do not have a 99 waypoint limit and would be fantastic. You guys have heard me talk about Pix4D Capture before. You do need a license for Pix4D to use that application. There's also Maps Made Easy, which you can download. Uh, Maps Made Easy is also one of the only apps still to this day that has terrain awareness and terrain response, which is really important if you have a lot of elevation changes in your mapping area. In addition to that, there are other programs like Leechy. Um, you can even use uh, gra- what is it called UGCS which we thought for a long time was going to be powerhouse um, but unfortunately it's not um, then there's the program that Pixhawk uses but that's not really for a lot of DJI drones I'm just trying to think there used to be so many applications you can even do mapping uh, through Kitty Hawk if I understand it correctly So Hmm. let's see, did I miss any maps made easy? No, I deleted all the other ones. Litchi, there's a couple different ones. But you use what the majority of the time? (laughs) I'm either using Pix4D Capture or I'm using DJI Go 4, but I only use DJI Go 4 for doing orbital shots. Okay. Um, any other time I'm really using, and you can even use Pix4D for orbital too, see circular for a 3D model. I really, and again, this is something you would learn in our mapping class if you came to one, 
each one of these options for creating a map has very different ramifications. Sure. And you need to understand when do I use free flight? Do I use free flight with double grid? Do I use it separately? What about circular? What about double grid versus single grid? Um, you know, there's a lot that really goes into that. I still think Pix4D captures the best. Maps Made Easy remains the only application with terrain awareness. Um, and Litchi is by far one of the best for planning super complex missions. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to have the limitation in Pix4D that we could only use one battery, but that's gone away now. So Pix4D has really opened up the, the segment on that, I mean, really significantly. Ground Station Pro is a new interface for Phantom 4 Pro RTK. Um, there's a proprietary version for that drone, and then there's Ground Station Pro, which runs on iPads. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in Ground Station Pro, like vertical facade orbit mode, which is really powerful for mapping um, cell towers. So, um, you know, there used to be things like, uh, what was 3DR? Site scan. Um, but site scan is $15,000 and you have to buy the drone, whereas Ground Station Pro does the same thing as perimeter scan, which is one of the main features in site scan. Perimeter scan is really done by uh, Ground Station Pro in the vertical orbit mode. Hmm. So as far as the waypoint question, the, 99, the limit of 99, I'm just kind of curious for context, and maybe everybody out there knows this, I don't, what, how many waypoints are necessary? Like, are we talking 101, 10,000? Dude, we, ev does... so technically a waypoint, it, it depends on how the SDK is reading a waypoint. A waypoint can either be one of two things. Um, it can be a point to point, meaning that like if I fly from point A to point F, you know, that's one waypoint. If I'm flying in safe mode or if I'm flying a drone with a linear rolling shutter, typically being flown in safe mode, a waypoint can be every time the camera would stop from A to F and take a picture. So then you have A through F5, you know, where you've already gone through the, the alphabet five times. In which know. case, only having 99 is a problem. It's significantly. Yeah. If you're, so like, for example, I'm going to see how many waypoints that map that I just calculated was. Um... So a waypoint would be each corner, and then it's a double grid, so that would be two waypoints. That would be two. That would be two. So in that case, it's not a big deal. Well, look how, look how that's only an acre. So that's going to be over 100 waypoints for just an acre site. Hmm. So 99 waypoints is actually a significant uh, problem. Hindrance, yeah. Yeah, hindrance is a good way to Which look at it. Which is why all of these apps don't have that limitation, so well, it's they really perform, not an issue. Yes, they perform through the SDK. I, I, did I miss what Droney said? Uh, he said Phantom 4 Pro. If it's a Phantom 4 Pro, there's no way there's a 99 waypoint limit. Hmm. Unless he's using DJI Go 4 or something. I just am like, dude, I've mapped 400 acres in a day. Hmm. And it was definitely more than 99 waypoints. And it was with that drone. I don't know. Misunderstanding. But regardless, you now have the apps available in terms of what... It's what also a good opportunity Paul for uses, us to right? update everyone on what apps we are using. Because yeah, we, exactly. we did just do that accident reconstruction class with, with mapping. And it's you definitely map differently. But I also learned, and this actually solidifies my belief in Pix40 even more. I gave someone the mapping photos of the helicopter from the NTSB uh, training. Mm -hmm. And this person is a capture reality fanatic. They love it. And he was like, oh, yeah. The and he's actually pretty good with it. He's very, very good, good with, with it. it. Yeah. Um, and he sent me the model back. And he was like, um, well, here's the model, the point cloud that I was able to build from your imagery. He's like, oh, it's really not enough data. Like, we would have need, uh, needed to fly a Nader mission over the helicopter to pick up the detail on the blade. And then I looked at the model that I produced from Pix4D, and it had all the detail of the blade. Hmm. And it made me realize that not only is Pix4D the most powerful and the most accurate mapping software, but it's also able to calculate more with less data. Hmm. And that's something that I just realized, like, last week. Yeah. So, always learning, always learning. Absolutely, and it's nice when something that you like gets proven to be effective and, and maybe the best option. True. Obviously. Very right? true. I mean, photo scan no, is right a close track. second, but the accuracy values and the research from, from the university showcase that Pix4D is a clear winner every time. So, Very cool, but it's a race. 
It is a a long race. Yeah, the next race is going to be, you know, what does DJI Terra end up being? Because that's supposedly been a tease for a mapping platform for a while. Hmm. And it could be a huge solution for package delivery folks like Amazon, right? If you map the world and you create a navigable point cloud, you can tell the drones exactly where to fly when delivering and dropping off packages. It's no longer about last mile, but it's last rooftop. Indeed. Last backyard. Last backyard. Last hundred feet. (laughs) That's right. So anyway. Very cool. Well, I hope that helped you, David. And if not, um, reach back out. Let us know if we're needing to clarify something. Yeah. Help me understand what what program we're using for 99. Yeah, because that is something that was not um, specifically stated. So, but nonetheless, I think he's got the answer, frankly. True. Very true. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for us today. Thanks again for listening. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you download podcasts. And thanks to our huge team here at DroneU for helping us uh, create the systems to get these shows out quickly. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask DroneU. (laughs) 